Good morning. I am Chris Steele. I'm the rector of St. Christopher's Episcopal Church. I want to thank you all for being here today and a special welcome to those of you who are joining us online. You can follow the service today with the lessons uh, in the link that's provided in the description of this video. Uh, please let your let us know you're here by leaving a prayer request or, simp uh, or simply a hello. Uh, we'd love to get in touch with you and talk to you more about the things we do here at St. Christopher's. If you're interested in learning more about that, I encourage you to reach out to us through our social media channels or through our uh, the telephone numbers or emails you'll find on our website. As Easter approaches, I hope you'll give some thought to joining us in person, and that schedule should be out this week on our website for Palm Sunday through the great festival of Easter Sunday. So I hope you will consider spending that with us this year. Uh, if, you'd, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, I'd encourage you to consider supporting St. Christopher's using the links you'll find in the description of this video. Our opening hymn this morning is number 574, number 574.
Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins on page 351 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your service bulletin. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy and your mercy forever. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord have mercy. Jesus said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind and all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Oreb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, 
for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has come now to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join me in unison as we recite Psalm 63, verses 1 through 8. O oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, and meditate on you in night watches. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you, and your right hand holds me fast. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did. And 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us, on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested by tested beyond your strength. 
But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. some present who told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? Do you think that they were worse offenders than the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Well, if you've just heard today, this third Sunday in Lent offered a mountain of riches in terms of sermon options. Please visualize me hunched over my computer, rubbing my hands together like Scrooge, although more like Bob Cratchit because my computer and work area are near a large window and it's often unbearably, unbearably cold. Shall I discuss Moses' fear and or feeling of humility over being sent by God to talk to Pharaoh? More like fear, he had been driven out into the Egyptian wilderness. The wilderness, Exodus refers to it. The Psalm was written when David was in the Judean wilderness, probably when hiding from Saul, but also possibly when his son Absalom had rebelled against him and others were seeking to kill him. We have Paul in 1 Corinthians telling those folks that all the Israelites who exited Egypt with Moses had seen God's power had seen the cloud protecting them by day, eaten mirac miraculous food in the manna God provided. And sidebar, manna really just means, what's that? Manna, in Hebrew. They had drunk the water from the rock that God provided and still were so lacking in faith in God that they believed the report of the 10 fearful travelers who were scoping out the land to see what it was like 
and they missed grapes so big they had to be carried on staffs and milk and honey flowing. But the report of giants in the land dissuaded them and God said, that's it, I'm gonna kill them all. But Moses convinced him that it would be bad in the press. And in the end, he said, everyone 20 and up could not go into the land. Moses also was kept out of the promised land because he disobeyed God, striking the rock at Meribah when he was supposed to speak to it, although there are more parts to that story. So tossing all these excellent opportunities in a basket, I tossed it in the air, seasoned it with Lent, and ended up needing to talk about repentance. Repentance is a huge theme in the Bible. It starts clear back in Genesis. The Hebrew word for repent is teshuvah, the root of the word is shuv, and it means turn. Most of the time in the Hebrew Bible, it has the meaning of literally turning, turn around. God turned back to Israel, Israel turned away from God. Teshuva, however, has a specific meaning, making a 180 degree turn away from the deeds for which we are repentant and going the other way. When we say the general confession, I try to leave a little time at the beginning, <clears throat> excuse me, for people to add their own repentance. I would actually like to leave a little longer, but it seems to make people uneasy if I don't launch. The rite in our church is called reconciliation of a penitent. The sacrament consists of four parts, contrition, confession, absolution, and penance. We confess against God and our neighbor and receive absolution if our repentance is genuine. But in Matthew 5, 23 to 24, part of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, so when you are offering your gifts at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Part of repentance is a true regret and sadness toward the person we injured. The website Apostolic Education says, also the act of repentance includes forsaking sin. In other words, if a person really means to repent, he or she must, with God's help, stop sinning. If repentance does not mean at least this much, it doesn't mean anything. When then is repentance? It's the act of turning away from sin and accepting the word of God. It involves the whole person, emotion, intellect, and will. The very idea of repentance strikes down any thought of reservation. It carries with it the connotation of complete reversal, 180 turn. Next, after the emotional, there's the intellectual part of repentance. The Greek is metanoia, a change of mind deciding that sin is sin. Reconciliation is one of the sacramental acts of our church. The Book of Common Prayer says in penitence, we confess our sins and make restitution where possible with the intention to amend our, our lives. A saying not in the Bible and not in the Book of Common Prayer is all can, none must, some should. More commonly called confession, it is reflecting on our sins and in many cases unable to shake the guilt associated with specific sins, approach a priest to seek sacramental absolution, which only a priest or bishop can administer. Our priest can and does hear confessions and deliver abs a sacramental absolution. A deacon can hear confession but instead of being about to absolve the person confessing, the deacon agrees that God forgives us. Other priests, priests in and around our area are open to hearing a confession from people who do not attend his or her church. I can personally attest to the lightness, the joy that comes with confession and absolution. During confession, the priest may ask questions and give advice. He or she probably will assign a penance. My confessor assigned me the penance of saying the Jesus prayer, Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. That was the version of that prayer I said. I was assigned to say it 25 times a day for 25 days. He was a very sneaky confessor. The prayer stuck, and to this day, I pray the prayer often. We do not, of course, have to confess to another person. 
although it is like getting a really good bath, being washed clean. But confessing to God and believing he will absolve one without it is also especially liberating. My sermon just before Lent encouraged all of us to add additional practices. If the idea of long-term practices such as daily prayer and Bible reading and Bible study seem too much right now, think about something that may be a one-off. Find a confessor, go through the process of self-examination and make a good confession. The St. Augustine's prayer book has an excellent selection for thinking about what sins we may have committed. Truly regret injuring someone, confess, receive the advice of the confessor, and fulfill the satisfaction, the penance given by the confessor. It may be necessary to ask the person or persons offended for forgiveness. This is sometimes the hardest part of the whole thing. Telling another person, I am sorry for something I have done, without making excuses or making counter accusations is hard. When my ex-husband was dying, my kids put him on the phone and I asked his forgiveness for those things I had done during our marriage that caused it to fail. And he said thank you and told them that was important. I actually had in mind that he was going to turn around and <laughs> say sorry too, but that didn't happen. I wanted to give him the opportunity. <laughs> And a final caveat, the Bible tells us in 1 John 1.18, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All, not some, all of us fall short of the glory of God. The good news for today is there is remedy for this human condition. Today, when I bid confession, I left a little space for you to think about any sins you may want to include. We can thank the church for providing us a means to receive forgiveness. Forgiveness already earned for us on the cross. Amen. Let's stand and profess our faith. We believe in one God. Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the people of St. Barnabas Denton and the Reverend Lorenzo Galuska and St. David of Wales Denton and the Reverend Paul Nesta and the Reverend Jordan Ryan Jordan, our allies with whom we stand and for Russians willing to speak out. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. 
for Michael, our presiding bishop, and George, our bishop, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joseph, our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, including Greg, our governor, and Eric, our mayor, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray, pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have mercy. For Doug, Mark, Billy, and Debbie, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, for Joyce Poole and Joanna Alaveri, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, for the people of Ukraine, all Americans in the military, that this conflict not be widened for an end to Russian aggression and the restoration of peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, Be O Lord, Lord our God. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and should give us the vision of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning, everyone. Have a seat for just a minute. Um, feels like we're on kind of a little downslope here. In the last couple of weeks, I've had three or four pages of announcements, and we will again, but uh, but we're in that kind of midpoint of Lent. Uh, next Sunday, of course, being Pink Sunday, uh, so wear your pink next week. Uh, it's Latari Sunday. It's the, it's the time we get a, a break from all the purple, and we get to rejoice a little bit. It's a little over halfway there. Uh, just a couple of notes about things coming up this week. Uh, first of all, on Tuesday, we have Father David Faulkner. This is yet another attempt to get him on the approach. And so we've had a couple of near misses, but finally we have got him uh, settled, and uh, he is on for Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. If you'd like to join us on that, I encourage you to, uh, if you get our emails, the link is in there. If, if you don't, uh, reach out to us on our social media or through, uh, or to email the office, and we'll make sure you get an invite uh, to join us on Tuesday morning. Uh, otherwise, it'll be up later that afternoon. It's our ministry where we talk to another clergy person about w uh, what the readings are presenting to us for the coming Sunday. Uh, on Wednesday, we have our usual uh, Bible study and uh, Eucharist, Eucharist at 10 a.m. And then it's actually a Lenten book study. We're about halfway through our consideration of a spring in the desert, uh, our Lenten devotional book. And so we've got a, a, a hearty crew that, that joins us on Wednesday morning just before lunchtime. So I encourage you uh, to do that. If you're around this week, uh, we're going to have some new faces at the school and we'll have an announcement about that soon. Um, just a little uh, getting ready for the next year. Things are going really gangbusters over there. Christian's got a, a great uh, set up going and we look forward to seeing that. But if you are over here during the week, I encourage you to stick your head in and say hello uh, to some of the new faces as we start to expand and the school really gets going. All baptized Christians are invited and encouraged to come forward for communion. Uh, we believe that this is 
a uh, the Lord's table, not an Episcopal one, and so uh, you are encouraged to come forward and, and partake of the Lord's Supper. If for any reason you don't wish to receive communion, we still invite you to come forward, just cross your arms over your chest, and you will receive a blessing. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. continues on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your service bulletin. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are and yet did not sin. By His grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for Him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O oh Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ. And his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover. I'll have to edit that out. <laughs> Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 143, number 143.